Good morning. It's Suzanne at White Dragonfly Healing, and I have a message for you today. Um, I actually asked my team if I could do a message today because I wasn't really feeling anything, and they said, yes, you can. Just stick to the topic that we pull when you pull your cards, and they wanted me to use my own two decks that I created, okay? So I used uh, this one that I created maybe five years ago with the team, and this, the latest one, okay, for, with the rainbow frequency. So what they're telling me, okay, is the two cards go together very, very well, all right? But they're telling me bring people back to the basics. Um, the message came in really strong, actually, once I started connecting with them, how people are waking up too quickly. And there's a lot of trauma connected to them waking up quickly. And they're not able to um, balance their emotional state with their mind. So they're feeling the frequencies of what they're seeing or, or um, interacting with. They're thinking one thing and feeling another thing. And they're, they're not in sync. Okay. So what they reminded me, well, um, a lot of people are, okay. I'm not criticizing or I'm not saying that there's, there's no people out there that can control their emotions or control their, um, their way of being if they are wide awake. This is for the newbies, the ones that are just waking up in the last year or so, the last six months, the last five months, you know, the last few months since all of this has started. Um, and they're waking up at a rapid pace. And he says to me, he is growing. It came out as leery, but that means that you're, um, when you're leery of something, you're unsure. But the feeling he was giving me is his, his concern for those that are waking up so quickly because they're out of balance. They're spinning out. Somebody says that to me all the time. This person's spinning out, you know, and that's basically what's happening. The energy is getting a hold of them, putting them in a whirlwind where they can't control what comes out or what they feel or what they think. So the first card I pulled and I thought it was really funny because uh, they really want me to stick on track with this message. They know I don't like talking about chakras. Okay. Cause you know, I haven't, I've been doing this for quite a while. I'm not new at what I'm doing. I've been helping people for decades in all of my businesses. I've, I've stepped more into my spirituality in the last 10 years or so openly. And, um, you know, I, uh, there's things I like to discuss and things I like to share, things I am more versed in. And, and then there's things that I'm not a hundred percent sure on. Okay. Um, cause this takes a little bit more, uh, focused educational learning or learning about these things. Right. So the card I pulled was a chakra card and it was the solar plexus. Okay. So this is the card. I'll read you the message because this is where we hold the base of our emotion. All right. So the solar plexus chakra is where emotion, where, sorry, where unrefined emotions and uh, personal power connect. So that's your mind and your heart and your gut all connecting at one time. Okay. Um, it gives us a sense of complete satisfaction, sorry, and control over our own creative will. So you're being guided. If you're one of these people that can't get a hold of your emotions, you're feeling um, out of sorts, you're feeling needy, you're feeling um, unstable, you're dealing with anxiety or you're dealing with depression or you're dealing with, you know, anger and, and lashing out and things like that, you know, misconstruing things from other people, reading people incorrectly, um, and, and situations, okay, jumping to a conclusion, that kind of thing, that is your solar plexus out of balance. So what you need to do in order to clear that, okay, is, you know, it's a constant, uh, it's a constant learning curve to get your emotions in state. It's about releasing, it's about letting go of things that aren't in the present moment. Things that have happened in the past have happened in the past. You can't control it. Everything happens the way it does to get you to a place that you're at now. The thing is, have you learned the lessons along the way? Have you learned about those things that upset you when you were younger? Have you learned about that first relationship that went awry? You know what I mean? Or, or that family member that, um, 
did something and, and now you're still not talking, you know, from 10 years ago. Seriously, you need to let go of those things. We're really only living in the present moment, each moment. We breathe and take a breath in the current time that we're in, the, the timeline we're on, the current moment, the space we're in, you know, the exact time we breathe is where we're at. We're not 30 years ago. We're not 20 years ago. That's so gone. And we're not even in the next moment yet. We're breathing into the next moment. All right. So the trick is to try and release. Don't hold grudges. Don't stay mad. Don't like, you know, try to work through those things. Okay. It's a process. And, and you do that with meditation. You do that with walking and taking quiet time. That came up in the last reading that I did. Um, you know, learning to observe something without judgment, like not trying to know every little detail of what's going on in everybody's life or in the, the collective, not needing to know what's going on behind the scenes, you know, live in your own present moment, you know, with, um, with what keeps you in a balanced state with your emotions and your mind. If something starts to trigger you, stop what you're doing. Step back and go, whoa, why is this triggering me? Is this from another relationship I had, another friendship I had, another sibling, you know, from that I got back in touch with, but this one is still ticking me off kind of thing. Look at what's causing you to trigger. Okay. And then switch it, flip the switch and turn it back around so that you're in your heart space and your mind and your heart are connected in that channel run straight from creator, straight from God into us. Everybody has this gift of connecting with God and many people don't utilize it because they're all about religion and they're all about this and that. You know, I am not a religious person at all. You, I wish, you know, my father could talk to you guys because he'd tell you how I was when I was a kid when it comes to religion. But I would like to say I'm more connected to the universe and, the, and spirituality and God, there is a God, there is a God, there is one creator, you know, and that, that's a, that's a, just a given. Everybody knows that. And that's, you know, that's who I connect to. There have been ascended masters. There have been masters that have walked the earth, you know, Jesus, of course, Gandhi, you know, um, you know, Moses, all of these people were actually people, you know, and, just like when a family member crosses and you can connect with your grandma or your father or your mother or your sibling, you can connect with those same entities as well once they're in that consciousness. Okay, and I'm getting off track. Okay, they're, they're pulling me back. They're saying, whoa, get back on track. Okay, so we're talking about getting your emotions in check and not letting it rule you. When your emotions get out of check, it causes stress in the body. I'm not a physician, I'm not a doctor, I'm not recommending anything, but I've learned that when you're stressed, it causes this overproduction of cortisol in your body. And, you know, for women, that's a big deal when you start to get a belly or you start to get extra squishiness to you, you know, and um, that can be controlled by your mindset and your your emotional state. Okay. And not allowing those stress receptors to be triggered. Okay. The other card I got, I love this one. Okay. This, this angel I have in here, um, at a certain point in my life, I had an uncle give me a little bit of money and he said, Suzanne, go get something for yourself. So what I did was I went out and bought this angel and you can't see it, but it's the trumpeted angel. He's holding the trumpet and he's, he's, uh, He's been in every beginning of every new thing I've ever done, this little angel. And I had a session one time and the client knocked it over and broke it and I was devastated. And then I kind of put it back together and thought, okay, I can live with that. And then uh, when I moved again, somebody very important to me knocked it over again and broke it even more. And I was like, oh my God. So anyway, I put it back together and I still have it. It's a very, very special little angel that I have. And I'll, you know, I love it. But anyway, I used it in this card because it was broken. <laughs> okay. They guided me to use the picture. So everything happens for a reason, right? The, the message that comes with it is fragile is the heart of the angel speaking truth to the fallen. Rise again, broken angel. Okay. So what that represents is people uh healers 
uh, people that are wise, people that have lived a little bit of life. They know they're an old soul. They've been here a few times. They don't need to go through the process because their spirit reminds them they've already done this stuff, right? Those people are angels, I believe, returned to do more work. But the heart can be broken when you see your friends and your family and your, your, you know, just people and humanity going downhill because they can't see a bigger picture of, of what's going on, right? Everybody has to walk their path and live their own life, but it's hard on a healer. It's hard on somebody that their, their main passion in life, their main the objective is to help other people in whatever it is they do, whether they're a doctor or they're a lawyer or they're, cause there are lawyers out there that want to help people, you know? At whatever profession it is that you're in and your main objective is to help other people, it can break your heart when you see them struggling, when you see them, you know, fighting their demons, when you see them not in a place where they can understand something positive that they're being, that's being shared with them or another, they can't see another perspective or another side. They're so stuck, you know, and it's heartbreaking for people like myself, you know, um, and other healers that watch this going on in the society and watch this with, with, you know, humanity as a whole, seeing how people can be so cruel. And, you know, um, anyway, I won't go on and on about that. But the message, as much as this message is for people, for those people that are needing, that are waking up, that are needing to start to get in balance. It's also for those of us that help those people. And we're seeing masses of people waking up now and it's almost overwhelming at times. But what you, you know, what I've learned is you can't help everybody. You need to learn as a healer and as a, you know, one of those people how to step back and just observe and just allow things to unfold and not get caught up in drama, not get caught up in what's going on all the time. When you're in control of your own space, okay, nothing can shake you. You know, things as a human can make you go, what, what the heck, <laughs> right? But when you're centered and you know who you are underneath this body, who you are as a, a as a healer that's come here or as an angel that's come here to help humanity. You see the bigger picture and, you know, you can just let, let things unfold with people and step back and watch and just continue to send positive energy to them as they struggle and go through their ego-minded things, okay? Um, and, uh, yeah. That's the message. It's a two, two sided message today. Um, you know, and it's a good one. Be there for, if you can be, be there for people that are spinning out. Try to help them, but don't try to help them too much. Allow them to go through the process, step back and let them learn because they won't get to a place of, of solitude. They won't get to a place where they're, they're comfortable. Okay to step back and be in that quiet space. It takes a long time to get to that place and it takes a lot of work to be able to learn how to be in the quiet, how to appreciate quiet energy, how to appreciate being solitude, knowing that you can be in the masses if you need to be. But, you know, over time, the older souls they don't want the bullshit because they've been through it a million times and their spirit is keeping them back. You know, this is what I believe. Um, when you're okay to just hang back and not be caught and pulled into things and just be quiet and not always participate and not have to be there and not have to all these things, that's an old soul. When you can help somebody by not being there, when you can help somebody by seeing the bigger picture and stepping back and allowing them to go through these things, right? Doesn't mean if you're, you know, we are human and we have our things that we get upset about. Okay. I'm not saying that, but when you truly are connected to your spirit and you know why you're here, there's a lot of people here on big, big missions right now. And, um, it's really good when you can hook into that knowing and understand and be able to hear your team tell you flat out, no, this is what you're doing. 
you're not going over here. doesn't matter if you want to be over there. No, no, no. You're over here. This is what you signed up for. This is what God sent you for, right? So for those of you that are waking up quickly, quickly, you know, take a deep breath. Learn to breathe. Step back and go, whoa. Start looking at the world like it's a big movie screen, you know, a picture, a movie. And just watch things unfold, knowing you're okay. You're going to be okay. Everybody's going to be okay. We need to stop the panic and stop the freaking out. Just be prepared for things. You know, that's just common sense, right? So those are my messages for today. But I want to, I also want to tell you, please sign up for my newsletter on my website, SuzanneBertolis.com. And I'm going to be restructuring in the coming months, okay, I'm not rushing to do this, but I want you, if you follow me, to sign up for my website because I will eventually send out another email, another newsletter to say, this is what I'm doing now. This is where I'm going to be. My my personal page may come down and I may create a brand new one with a different um, look and whatever. And that is where I'll be working from, okay, because uh, it's time for me to change things up up a bit. Uh, personally, with my healing work, I've been doing a lot of it for a lot of years now. I do want to get back into teaching. I want to get back into helping and doing sessions and, you know, maybe not a, a typical uh, QC session because I already know we've gone past that, okay, pulling in the collective. It's gone beyond that, okay? So I have to wait for guidance on what to do with that as well. And I'm pretty sure I'll be back to teaching. And I'm really excited about that because I love doing that, especially teaching Angel Fire Reiki. So that's it for today. This is, wow, this is 16 minutes. But I hope you all have a great day. Remember to subscribe to my channel, like it and share it because I'm trying to build my followers, even though the people out there keep unsubscribing people from my channel. It's okay. Um, the angels bring the people that need to hear my messages and I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you've stuck through this with me and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day everybody and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.